Great. Today's topic is pranayama. What is pranayama? What is prana? Prana is that cosmic energy, that which makes us move, makes us talk, makes us walk, makes our eyelids go up and down, makes us breathe. Prana is everything, it's energy, it's Shakti. According to yogic texts, Prana is deified as Para Shakti. Can you say it? Para Shakti. The supreme energy, the supreme. Nothing greater than that. In the Bible, in Genesis 2, it says, And then God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. And then man became a living being. So prana is what we're made from. Pranayama is the control, regulation, or mastery of this prana. Got it? You learn to regulate, you learn to control, and then you master the prana in your body. When you master the prana in your body, you can master many things. Because prana is inside your body, and prana is outside your body. Prana is what causes everything to move. Prana is what causes everything to exist. So this is why the yogis say, when you can conquer the microcosm, which is you, the small thing, you can conquer the macrocosm, which is everything. Because the prana in you is the same as the prana outside of you. The only thing is we don't know how to master it. Why? Because the mind is in between. The mind is in between. The mind fluctuates. One, one moment it believes its soul. The next moment it becomes so human it does not believe its soul. One moment it's full of love and light. And next moment it's so ah, desireful and excited and upset and angry. The mind itself is all over the place. So when we learn to master prana, we can learn to quiet the mind. And this is why pranayama is such an important practice. But prana is a very incredible force and very powerful. And it is compared to a deadly cobra. You, in order to master it, you have to start very slowly. You need to be truly dedicated. You really need to know what you want from this prana. Why do you want to master the prana? For what reason? So it's very important that prior to working with pranayama, you understand it and understand what you want. So what do you want? You tell me, what do you want? Anybody know? What do you want? Why are we studying this science? What do you want? The mind, the, the control of the mind, the prana, the peaceness, peacefulness of the body. Okay, so you want peacefulness of the body and control of the mind. Why? Why do you want that? To not to be to disturbed, whatever will happen, whatever happens will not disturb you. Okay, to, to, good. To, 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 to remain to, calm. To remain calm. Okay, why do you want to remain calm? Is there a deeper reason? Is there anything more deeper than that? Not to suffer. Not to suffer, yeah. In this world is full of suffering. Definitely. Yeah, to understand the infinity. To understand the infinity. And yourself. Correct. Now you're going deeper. To connect your yourself with the your higher. Absolutely. Now you're going deepest. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> to connect yourself. Do you see how many levels? First the body and the mind. It's all correct. All the answers are correct. It's at what, what stage of development are you? Emilio, I love you so much and that flower is so beautiful. But do you mind being still, darling? Thank you. She's so good, don't you think? Did you see? She gave me a beautiful picture. Belle. No, no, Belle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. So, um, where was I? About um, 
the, the yes. different yes. levels. Yes. 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 So for the beginners, they want to study pranayama because they want to sit steady, they want to be able to meditate. But as you go further into the practice, you realize all that is good. Asana is great. You keep steady, it's good. You meditate, it's good. But then for what? Because like Carmen said, life is full of suffering. There comes a point when you want to detach from all these physical things. You want to. It comes, it's a normal reaction. You've had so much going on in your life that you want to be a little free from it. You want some freedom. And you want to have undisturbed calmness while you're living on this earth. So this is the real practice and then from this undisturbed karma, calmness you understand that you are God. Hmm? Be still and that <coughs> I am God says the songs. Be still because where there is no mind there is no longer you is it? There is no mind there is no you. When there is mind, you are there. So do you see that? Mm -hmm. So for that split second, when you are not there, you gain a lot of energy from that practice. That's why deep relaxation is a kind of pranayama. I know you do deep relaxation. It's a pity when I have my center in Sutra Bandha, we can do that. We'll have the floor space. It's a very easy way to understand that stillness. I work with it a lot with my patients. Because in that quietness, in that quietness of deep relaxation, yeah. you're so distracted from you that they all come out saying to me, oh my God, I've never experienced such peace. And once you experience it, you want it again and again and again and again. So anything that takes it away from you, you know you don't want it. You just know. It takes away your peace because the peace becomes so precious. And that's what happens with all life. And that's where the non-attachment comes in. By itself. That's why I say you don't have to force yourself. I gotta be detached. I gotta be detached. By itself. As you practice, it will happen naturally. And it should happen naturally. Because when you force anything, it doesn't feel right. It creates friction. Effort must be put in to stop certain desires. Effort. You have to put the effort in. But effort is not, it should not be such a, such a painful struggle. It should be a struggle, but joyful. So now let's go back to pranayama. Let's go to the first instance. How does it help us physically, on the physical level? When you learn to breathe quietly, there is a sense of peace, right? Most agitated people, most nervous people, for example, when people come to my office, never done any yoga, they have panic attacks, they come in, <laughs> they're not breathing. There's almost like there's just the exhalation, there's no inhalation. So breathing will help to pacify the mind immediately. Also, keeps you younger. Why? A normal breath, people normally breathe, and they take in 500 cubic centimeters of air. By breathing deeply, you can build up to seven times more oxygen. Oxygen now, doctors have realized, is ox oxygen therapy everywhere now, mm -hmm. keeps the cells young, keeps them healthy. See, so if you're very, very busy and you do too much, you lose a lot of prana, and that can cause for disease and illness. This is why they say yoga is not for the one who eats too much or eats too little, sleeps too much or sleeps too little, does too much or does too little. Yoga is about moderation, because any extreme will take you off your balance. Now pranayama, when you're off balance, is fantastic, because it's a tool. Prana is actually not the breath, but prana can come in, it's everywhere, right? Through your breath. So it also cures diseases, keeps you young, gives you energy, different breaths do different things. It also brings a lot of oxygen to your brain cells, and in that way, um, 
you know, promotes the well-being of the brain, memory, mind. You develop a good memory when you do a lot of pranayama. Because it sends oxygen to your oxygen to your brain. So on a physical level, wow, <laughs> do it every day, do it every day. But like I said, it's compared to a deadly cobra. I'll give you a story before we start with the techniques, and we'll go straight into techniques today. As the story Gurudev tells, he had he was giving a talk on pranayama one day, and there was this person. Oh my God, I would love to, you know, uh, levitate. Because if you do a lot of pranayama, you develop lightness of the body. Your body becomes light. It doesn't matter if you're big or small, but there's a lightness. You feel a lightness in your body. So anyway, he went back and he started doing bastrika. Six months later, he called my master and he goes, Oh my God, all my veins are popping up from my eyes. I'm getting very nervous. Something's going wrong. So Gurudev said, and right away, stop all your practices. What have you been doing? He said, look at this girl. I wanted to achieve levitation. Do you see? And the goal was not the highest. So what happened? He burnt out his body. Then we met somebody at the ashram when I went there many years ago. Well, Gurudev was alive. When I took the group of 18, and she wanted to join our group. She asked, could I please, please? So I said, of course you can. Anybody can join us. And she was telling me that she went to this school <coughs> in New York. You know, she was very disturbed, okay? She had many things happen to her. So she went to this course in New York about pranayama. And she, they said, she could just live off prana and not too much food. So she did a three-month fast with them and just did pranayama. Of course, she went nuts. Mm -hmm. She went a bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And what she went for, initially the first month and a half, she was good. But when she extended it to three months, her teeth started, started falling off. Her uh, nails started cracking. Her hair became wiry. And when we saw her at the ashram, she was very agitated. She came to this ashram to get away, to find how to cure herself. Mm -hmm. Nobody would have her after that. So I told her, how can you embark on a course like that? Mm. Be sensible. Mm. Hmm? Have you ever done a fast before? To no, but I believe they said I could live on prana. I said, you're not a saint. And besides, you know, you were there to sort out your mind. First, you need a psychologist. Hmm? Do you see, you have to know what medicine to apply for what disease. Her disease was psychological. So what should she have gone for? For a psychological teacher. If your disease is spiritual, you go for spiritual healing. You have to know where your disease lies and then you get the best medicine for your disease. Hmm? Now pranayama is good for all diseases but you also have to know how to practice it. And also with practicing pranayama it is very good to know that you should not practice on a heavy stomach. All right? You should not, for at least one hour, you should not have eaten. So the best time probably is just before meditation in the morning or just after meditation in the morning. Just before if you're not a um, confident meditator or haven't been meditating long enough is wonderful because it'll take you into meditation like this. So we will try that today anyway. We'll do some of the techniques now. And uh, if you've been meditating for a long time, then even two or three breaths and you're done. Then you just go straight into meditation. But still, practice pranayama because for your health it is extremely good. So also it um, helps to dissolve nervous energy. When you're very hot, there are breaths that will cool you down. So for the physical, there are many, many. So we'll start with the first one, which is very simple, which most of you know. But before we start, I would like to request, is it okay if I stand up with this microphone? Yeah. I would like us all to stand up for the first few um, breaths. And you okay, Sean? Yes. Holding up? Yes. Okay. okay. Just to get, get our body into shape, because prana works through much better when our spine is straight but not forced, right? You know, force is rigid. You're not rigid. You're comfortable. Also, the chest should be stretched out. So please just breathe in. And allow that space. Here's 
space. Stretch up. Find yourself space. Yeah. Breathe in. Find that space. And breathe out. Again, breathe in. Breathe out. And then stretch your body up as high as you can. Feel the back. Stretching, stretching, and that's it. Move from side to side until you find the right spot you can feel. And drop the arms down. And then gently just um, just like you would bend one knee and the other one. Just to move the body. Did you know that marching was very good for balancing your nerves? Hmm? Did you know that? Uh -huh. So we go like marching? and for coordination, so you don't lose your coordination. Did you know that? It's a simple exercise. Do it with me. March. While well, we're doing our feet, we might as well do this. It is. Marching is really good coordination practice. You don't get old if you do marching like this. Yeah, see, because it's coordination, one with the other. Okay, so drop that. And if you need to stretch your back, which I do, oh, just, oh. Nice to stretch, isn't it? Yes. And come up. Okay, now we are ready for some pranayama. Mm -hmm. Before we sit down, we'll do the Dirga Swasam, which is a three part breath. So, if the way to imagine this is when you fill a glass with water, the bottom fills first, right? And then the middle, then the top. So, the same thing with your oxygen. You breathe in and feel as if your abdomen is expanding and then your solar plexus and then your chest and then your throat. But don't force it. Relax with it. All right? And as you exhale, same as you empty the glass, the top comes up first and then the middle section and then the bottom. And when you breathe out, always try to exhale everything you have without strain. We'll start with exhalation before we do the inhalation. So just put your arms facing forward like that. You will feel the prana in your hands when you breathe. Uh, exhale fully and completely and bring your abdomen in. Inhale deeply. Exhale gently. Get deep breath again. And breathe out. Open your eyes. Cells will become alive just with a few breaths. See? And now it's a really good time to receive good energy or give good energy. Mm. It's a good time to give good energy. So close your eyes. Mentally go around this room. You don't have to remember where you saw whom, but go around the room and wish everybody well. Open your eyes. It doesn't take a second to do that. You're good at it, you can do it really fast. Send energy really fast. 
So let's practice again. I want you to wish around the room really quick and remember who you see and what you see. Okay? It's a good practice for memory too. Close your eyes and go around. mind is very quick, quicker than the body, yeah. right? We had to walk around, it takes us quite long. Mm -hmm. So we learn to use and focus the mind much better, much better. Okay, we can sit down. Oh good, you can sit down better if you can sit in a cosmetic position. It is warm today, yes? And Pranayama will do the cooling breath later so it will make you feel warmer, okay? Um, if you can sit in cross-legged positions on the floor, it would be better. And you can move here, this space here. And if you can't sit straight on your chair, it's good enough. Yeah, sit straight on your chair is good enough. But do sit straight, just here. Just have a nice... You're good to back, actually. Your posture is good, like this. You have good posture, you don't do this. Good. It is it's too hot. No, if I open, it's, it's in too hot. Yeah. Oh, yes. The house is cool. It's a hair dryer wind. Oh, yes, yeah. it's Sahara wind so today. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's cooler, cooler yes. with the yeah. girls' yeah. clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think I'm hot because of that. Mm -hmm. The light, yeah. No, don't worry. No. Mm -hmm. Doesn't okay. matter if I'm hot. <laughs> yeah. Cooling breath. <laughs> Let's do a cooling breath before yeah. we carry on, okay? Let's do a sit -ally. You all know, remember sit -ally? It's a cooling breath, and it's really good when you have a fever. Or like me this morning, I woke up with a horrible sore throat, and I've been doing the cooling breath all day. And it's really good when you're meditating, because uh, many times in meditation, when you first move your Kundalini energy, there's a lot of perspiration, and there's a lot of heat that builds up in your body. And also to help you thwart uh, hunger and thirst. You know, the yogis used to meditate for many, many hours. So in order not to feel hungry and thirsty, they used to do the sitali. So if you just stick out your tongue and roll it, suck in air, and breathe out. Imagine you're like a lizard. So you bring out the tongue and you bring it very quickly, all right? Like that, and suck that air in, okay? Should we try again? Let's go. And breathe out. Again. Cooler. The tongue will feel cooler. You don't feel cooler. I feel hot. You feel too hot. <laughs> um, and we'll do Sitkari next since we're doing the cooling breath. This is really good also for oxygenating your teeth and gums. So if you have trouble with uh, gum disease, etc., please do this every day. It's really uh, very good for you. Again, teeth. Yeah. And breathe in. Breathe out. Again. And breathe out. Again. And breathe out. Away, but uh, I guess men, you must do it more times to get cooler. <laughs> Actually, your thermostat, you get hotter much quicker, quickly, mm -hmm. much more quickly than women do. It's the way we're made. That's mm -hmm. 
So, okay. So next we will do, which I'd really like to do with you. So we've done the dear gas while some standing up. Now really, if you're going to make it a firm practice, you should do it at least 12 times. All right? 12 times. You start with 7 and you build up to 12. And then after 6 weeks, you build up to 20 times in your practice. Should we do the 12 now and then mm -hmm. go to Kapalabhati next? Because yes. it's a very soothing one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll instruct for the first three. But then I would like you to continue at your own pace for the rest, all right? Mm -hmm. So that you get a good rhythm of the <coughs> breath. Remember, try when you're breathing out to remove every single, all the toxins. The breathing out expiration should be longer than the inspiration all right always so and remember not to force the breath don't force it don't do because you can't can you see what happens to you create too much tension so when you breathe in just relax just enjoy it just I can still go on longer if I don't force it. All right, so let's start. You can close or open your eyes as you wish. It would be nice to put your hands in either chin mudra or like this. Inhale deeply. And exhale. Continue at your own pace. Repeat a mantra. Let's all repeat Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti in our minds. When you reach up to 12, put your head in prayer position so I know. Gently lift your eyelids. Help you to focus.
those who have finished, I'd like you to just focus on your ears and listen to whatever sounds you hear. Try not to let your head flop, but keep the posture straight. That's it. Keep the head straight, comfortably straight, not forced. And now open your eyes. Just stare. Just stare. Find one thing. Listen to the thoughts of your mind with your eyes open. Hear your own thoughts. open your eyes. Did you notice that you had almost stopped breathing? When I asked you to take a deep breath, you all had to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> take a deep breath, yeah? And it was easier to take a deep breath. See? It was, yeah. 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 It was nicer it was. and more yeah. full. Yeah, absolutely. You could feel the oxygen, right? And it was a good yeah. deep breath, not like the beginning ones when you have to put so much effort, right? Mm -hmm. Because when the mind is quiet, it is easy to master and control the prana. Mm -hmm. Did you see as well how easy it is to watch your thoughts at that point? There's a fly buzzing around your ear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could you hear it? There's flies. Yeah, there's some flies in yeah. there. Quite a lot, yeah. So, um, and then I thanked Kim because I heard her said love, and that was nice. And, um, yeah, you can feel. You start to break the barriers that exist between you and the world when you 
practice like this deeply every day, you, you break barriers. I mean, if somebody is very upset with you, and you don't want, you have enough control of your prana, and this is what the yogis do. They have so much control over their mind that even if they're angry with you, you can still send them a lot of pure energy, good energy. And it's not even force or pretense or trying. Yes, because with your practices, you just get good. And when you get good, it's automatic, like playing the piano. When you first learn to do the scale, you really have to look at your fingers, you know? And then once you've done the scales, you no longer have to look at the fingers anymore. You go really fast. And it's the same with the prana. You no longer have to study the mind. It goes really fast. You can scan things. You become more aware. My master always said, you should become more aware. That's how you live in life. Be aware. When you're into I, me, and mine, you cannot be aware about anybody's feelings but your own. So try not to be so much in I, me, and mine. It actually takes away your prana. It takes away your ability to communicate tele telepathically. You can easily do it. Okay, so that's Dirga Swasam. He practiced 12 rounds, if you can, every morning. <clears throat> the next, after this, you feel a little sleepy, a little lightheaded, mm. and you want to sleep. So we wake ourselves up with Kapalabhati. Mm? So Kapalabhati will give a lot of oxygen to the brain, a lot of oxygen to the nerves, and a lot of heat. So it's very effective in keeping you awake. When you're very tired, it's really good to do Kapalabhati. When I was working and doing yoga, my day was very, very long. It doesn't seem to have changed. <laughs> and uh, I said, like, four o'clock in the afternoon, I worked at a retail shop. I was like, oh, you know, oh, falling asleep. <laughs> Do some Kapalabhati, go into my husband's office and start doing Kapalabhati. What are you doing giving myself energy? I'm falling asleep. <laughs> so um, it's really, really good for you if you've got an office job as well, you know? So inhale. You're on more Kapalabhati? It's a forced, okay, it's a forced exhalation and a natural inhalation. Now most people when they do Kapalabhati, they force too much. No, it's really very normal. It's like you've got a feather in your nose and you go, yeah, everybody try that. Put your hand there. It's not, not really loud. No, it's just natural. And then you breathe in naturally. See the breathing in is natural and short. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> we did it Breathe out, fully and completely. Breathe in slowly and deeply. And breathe out. You will notice after Kapalabhati when you take in the breath the cool breath going into your nostril. Notice next time. Okay? Notice how cool it feels. And you're taking more prana. Okay. So let's do that again. Inhale. Exhale fully and completely. Inhale deeply.
You just notice what's that, what you're feeling at the back of your neck. And if you're really aware, you will feel the middle section of your body, the chakras, moving. To the last and final round. Take a simple three-part breath. Inhale deeply. Hold your breath. Hold your breath at the throat. Bring your chin to the chest, holding your breath. Now squeeze the muscles of your anus as if you're closing off the bottom there. It's called Muna Vandana. Lift your head and exhale. Throat lock is called Jalandra Vanda. The anus lock is called Mula Vanda. And we're going to add the third one called Yudhyana Vanda. And why are we doing that? Because all diseases start basically from our digestive fire. Our intestines, pancreas, kidneys, spleen, gallbladder, bladder, everything in this area lungs, heart. What we're going to do is inhale deeply, hold all the air in by applying the lock so air doesn't leak out. And then this really fortifies the oxygen. It's like going to an oxygen chamber, filling those parts with really clean air. And the blood that carries oxygen in your body will carry the blood in that area and freshly create new cells very quickly. Right. Now, Yudhyana Vanda is the third <coughs> Vanda, which is the stomach lift lock, and it's like in and out, okay? In and out. In and out. You bring your stomach in, yeah? Feels in and out, yeah? So, let's practice swallowing. Feel that? Those are your epiglottis. Jalandra Panda, hold your breath there. Chin to chest, all right? No fly that side. Mula Panda. Always. Okay, fly, you can go now. That'd be good. Um, come on, go. Mula Panda, anus lock. Feel it? You squeeze the muscles there at the bottom. Yudhyana Vanda, stomach lift. Okay, now we're going to just try doing all three together before we go into the breath, all right? Ready? Just inhale to practice. All three locks. Lift the head. 
get there. Excellent. Did you manage? Mm -hmm. Okay, don't no. worry, we don't become no. an expert soon. It takes lots of practice. I manage to start. Okay, you keep practicing, all right? So let's take a deep breath now, everyone. You can do it with your eyes open if you like. Locks. Lift the head and release. Whoever lifted their head first, good. George, know when you hug how long you can hold it for without strain. I can hold quite long, so I may forget or think you can too. So when you can't, just release it immediately, okay? At your own pace. So let's go again. Inhale deeply. Close your eyes. Feel the inner movements of your body. Not as if it's trying to tell you anything. There's an ache or pain. Just a feeling of ease. Teach you your journey, so to break you from your uh, lovely silence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your journey is one of my favorite breaths. Uh, it's very good for people with respiratory problems. Um, for me, it's very soothing. I always say it's like putting Vicks on the chest. I love your journey. And um, your journey is also called a hissing breath. It's the three-part breath, but what you do is you breathe in through your throat. And it's really good for your, your pharynx, your larynx, your voice, your vocal cords. It also gives a sweet voice to you. To you. Also, you see this area is connected with your internal hearing, your, inter your voice, your speaking, your speech. So it massages all this chakra. So it's extremely good for you. Also, at the point of death, it says that all the pranas come to Udana, which is the prana that you take to leave. It comes to this area first, and then for the person who has achieved Mahasamadhi, the soul will leave through the crown of the head. So it comes through this area, and then through the crown of the head which is a very good way to pass. So if you have some control over your prana, at, you know, and your mind is still at the moment of death, you can direct your prana, your soul, to your highest level. This is why it is really important to practice now, to gain mastery now, control now. Because if you don't do it now, you say, oh, at the, at the moment when I'm going to die, I'm going to apply it. You won't be able to. 
because your mind will be too disturbed. You'll be, have too many attachments you won't want to leave. You, there'll be too much pain in your body. Hmm? But if you can learn to control all those things now, while you have pain, while you have suffering, then at the moment of death, the transition is very easy for you and your family. So, um, when you do the Ujjayi, it's again, you feel your glottis swallow. You feel it? You feel it right there, right? You kind of like hold it, yeah? Hold it, and you breathe in, and it sounds like this. I'll make you, it sounds like the ocean, actually. Today I have a little bit of a sore throat, so I don't know how it's going to come out. <laughs> we try. Try with me. It sounds like the sea. This the inhalation and the exhalation make it equal, right? So it sounds like the waves of the ocean. Now you can understand the sound is going to take you into a very gentle meditation. So try it with me. Inhale. Try and miss, make the hissing sound. Feel like massaging the back of your throat, cleaning out that area, making your voice sweet, kind. Speak no evil. Building up <clears throat> your cosmic power. Connecting with the divine. Connecting to your intuition, your highest power. As you breathe in, all is well. And as you breathe out, all is well. And finally, well, there's two more, and then you can just relax. So that is called Ujjayi, or the hissing breath. 
will do from our next. <clears throat> Anybody here sing? They love singing? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> she says sometimes. He's yeah. printing a couple of records. <laughs> I, I, I actually I sing friends. to the trees, but I'll go into that. <laughs> Be truthful. I do, I do love singing. Yeah. Thank you. That came my talk. Be truthful. Anybody else who loves singing and maybe just thank you. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be a singer just because you love singing, but you love singing. And Brahmari is really like your jai. You can feel it. Really helps this part. And when you practice at home. It's really nice, or you know, anytime you're just sitting by the beach, or actually a few minutes before you start cooking or working on your computer, just sit back and do the ujjayi. You feel very good. It's quiet, it's soothing, and we should send lots of ujjayi breath down your knees because it's been hurting you. Another thing is while you're doing these, the prana, when you breathe it in, see it going to your knee, right? and see it circulating the knee. Because you're bringing the prana down, you're forcing, you're focusing on it to the knee, and you're seeing it heal. It works. I've seen many people self-heal, many, many people. So uh, the next one we're going to do is Brahmari, the humming bee. And then this is Brahmari. This is lovely. This is really easy. You just breathe in, and then you hum, like do the arm, from your throat area when you breathe out until you have no more breath. All right? We'll do four in continuation and everybody do their own length. All right? You can, this is not a competition. So let's start. Inhale. Mm.
soothing, which we massage the right and left side of our brains. And again, this really oxygenates your memory cells, your brain cells, your stagnant, stagnant energy. You can't move on, do a lot of pranayama to shift. You know when people have tamas, I tell them to do kapalabhati. And they're so dull and inertia, they keep, come on, let's build up your energy. When people are too nervous, I tell them to do nadi sudhi. Or the three part breath, good breath always, but Nadi Suri gives them something to do with their hands because the mind is sometimes so busy that it can't keep still. It just can't. I don't know if you feel that when we first did the first 12 Dirga Swasams, the mind resists after the fifth or sixth one. And if you, you didn't resist, you're good, you're good meditators. But normally the mind starts to fight back, you know, at you. It doesn't want to keep quiet. Hmm? So Nadi Sudhi is a really good one to give people when they're very agitated. So um, do Vishnu Mudra, which is put, put up your hand like this, and then bring down the index and the third finger, the middle fingers. Thumb to the right nostril. Hold the right nostril. Exhale through the left nostril. Inhale through the left nostril. Softly without making a noise. Hold the left nostril, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Hold the right, exhale through the left. nostrils, hold your breath. Exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Hold both nostrils. If you feel dizzy, it's very normal. If you feel very dizzy, then you'll do pranayama. <laughs> and then you come for meditation. The most important thing about prana is to start to understand what it does for you. When you notice, if you notice, the quietest times will be after you exhale. And you hold. The deepest meditations will come when you practice Kevala Kumbhaka, and that happens naturally. 
when the breath stops by itself, like we saw earlier. And again, some of you have stopped breathing. As the yogi say, you count your life by your breaths. So you don't waste your breaths. Your breath, your life, span extends. This is why then many yogis, if you read about them, have extended lives. I know many people believe that Lord Jesus died on the cross. There's proof that he hasn't, that he never did die on the cross. What he did was use his yogic gifts. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a cave in India, and I believe there's some research. Ula has a website. If any of you know Ula from Portugal? Yeah? She has a website that does all this historical study. But Gurudev told us that in Bali, he said there's a cave in, uh, in India, and they said Jesus actually had children. They got married and he lived there as a yogi for many, many years. Many years. And they called it Isha. The cave was Isha. And that's where he taught many, many people. So, um, you can do a lot with your yogic breaths. You prevent a lot of suffering in your own life by learning to control the prana. You can control your own speech when you control prana. That is why it is para shakti, like a goddess, the greatest goddess, because you are learning to control your energy. And with long practices, lots of gifts will be given to you. But remember, these gifts, like, it's, like I said, is a deadly cobra. How do you use these gifts? You will develop clairaudience, you will develop clairvoyance. Why will you develop these things? Natural, didn't you hear that when you're very, very still, how many more sounds you can hear? Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course you can start to hear more and see more. Mm -hmm. Of course you can start to heal quicker because you're taking so much more oxygen from, it's like electricity. Until you learn to harness it, we never got light. But electricity was always there in the environment, wasn't it? Always there, prana is there. So we learn to harness it with pranayama. We use, to, we use it for our, to create healthy bodies, healthy minds, and therefore live a peaceful, peaceful, and useful life. And of course, these gifts that are given to you are given to you so that you become strong, follow your own intuition, so you're not wobbly, so you don't get scared. They teach you to be safe when things are going wrong. They help you to become grounded. I love pranayama because it's very ground, grind, uh, grounding. Grounding, I was going to say grinding. <laughs> grounding, and it grinds you, it does. <laughs> and after a while, if you do uh, pranayama, you will also feel the movements of your own chakras. Any of you felt that yet? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can feel which chakra is moving. It spins. Yeah, and when you do a lot of pranayama, you're sleeping at night, sometimes it'll wake you up. Because yeah, it's spinning on its own. And you go, who is moving that? And who is doing this? So you ask the question, who created this perfect body? You know, the oxygen goes in, it goes through your lungs, and from the lungs to the heart, from the heart to your blood, from the blood oxygenates the whole body, then the blood takes the bad, the toxins back to your heart, where it dissolves into carbon dioxide, and out through your lungs again, in through your lungs again. I mean, who created such an incredible machine? You have to think, how did it happen? And all this is going on while... You're not even noticing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. No, I just wanted to say that the Swedish, Danish, Norwegian word for breath is clothing of the spirit. Wow. Ah. I love your language. Mm -hmm. well, that is a nice word. Yeah, you have some <laughs> very nice words. So some clothing of the yeah. spirit. Yeah, clothing of the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Can you say it in Swedish? Um, Andre. 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 Yeah. Andre is the spirit. Andre yeah, is the spirit. It's like, like a robe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what does Sri Patanjali say? By the practice of pranayama, the veil over the inner light is destroyed. So look at that word. The veil over the inner light is destroyed. Because there's a veil. 
you know, we all, like I said, the veil of materialism, the veil of desires, the veil of wants, the veil of everything screaming at you all the time. Through the practice, pranayama, you remove the veil. Why? Because you become very still and you're able to control the movements of the mind. Because the mind is what convinces you of pain or sorrow. It, 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 it's the mind that makes you grieve. It's the mind. It's also the mind that makes you joyful. It's the mind that does it all. But when you learn to control it, you can detach from it. Isn't it a great tool? It's a great tool. And it's free. And it's all free of charge. <laughs> and it's great for your health. And it keeps you young. See, so you practice, you won't get wrinkles. Why buy so many creams yeah. when you can do pranayama? Another thing that uh, somebody taught me was uh, when you do a lot of meditation, after you finish, you rub your hands because that energy, even Master Shivananda used to say that when you perspire a lot when you meditation, rub it on yourself. Don't wipe it with a cloth because all that that energy that you create is like medicinal. So you rub it on your body, keeps your skin soft. You rub it on your face and it keeps your skin free of wrinkles because you're creating that, that energy, that balm, that peace, that peace, that peace. And then you cup your eyes for your eyesight. That peace. And you build up your energy. And that is the reason for pranaya. Be still. And know that I am God. The veil over the, I love your Swedish word, the veil over the inner light is destroyed. That way you learn to listen to your intuition. Mm -hmm. Simply your health, and when you learn to listen to your intuition, you realize your human mission, you follow your human mission, you feel fulfilled, you feel useful, and your life will be peaceful. Simple. Is that simple? And you understand you're here for a short time, so there's no big drama in your life. Nothing is a big drama. Hmm? You don't create dramatic situations which give you bad karmic results. Because hmm? the more drama, somebody says, I love drama, I love drama. Yeah, but then the more drama you will get back. <laughs> I like to go to cinema and watch drama. <laughs> it's much easier. <laughs> You have a good time, you come out, you don't take it with you. When you create your own, you keep getting it back. And it's difficult to, to then get rid of that drama. It's hard work. So, I think Turti, you have something to say? I just said to finish the word spirit for the prayer. Is it? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's thank you. It's like a spirit. Same, similar to. Yeah. So look at that. Yeah. So look at that. You see? We are inhaling spirit. Yeah, that's what we say when we say you're breathing. You say you're inhaling spirit. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you are again. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. Can you find on the internet about all these different languages? <laughs> I'm looking at you all day. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere, so. <laughs> very, very far in the past, who has ever come up with these languages, they must have the same, same truth. The same no. No. That truth is one. Yeah. Yeah. Not so many. Yeah. See? Of course. Yeah. This is why when you understand the microcosm, you understand the macrocosm. And the first people that came, how did language come? Through hearing sound. How did all this come? Through hearing, being still. So, man had different, so they moved to different places and the sound started to change. But the language is the same. Described in different words. Like you said, different words, same meaning. Yes. I got another beautiful word for you in Swedish. It's when you say, I know you, actually you say, I feel you. It's, the word is feel, but so most people don't realize when they're speaking that that's what they're saying. Say we finish. Say? Yeah. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> we finish that. We say, yeah, I feel true. you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow, you come from a great background. They're very rich. Very rich. Yeah, very rich. Very rich language, yeah. So Sanskrit is the same. The source. Latin is the same from the source. Fantastic. 
And interesting to see all this, right? So that is it on pranayama. Do you have any questions? I mean, I can teach you more, we can do bastrika, but really no need. Just practice these. And if you forget them, I think Ollie's videoed them today. Yeah. So you can just look and see and keep going. It's done simply so that you repeat it more often. If it's too complicated and it's too much, you won't do it. So I'd rather make it simple. Yes? What will be the best for the elderly people? Because I deal with so many elderly, and they pay between 90 and 100. Well, and they don't breathe. They do, simple, even breathing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Don't even tell them to do Dirgaswasa because they will get so complicated. Just say, breathe in deeply. And breathe out. And Malisudi, they like to do something. Also, there are many, many variations to Malisudi. You know, if you've got a cold and you've got one nose blocked in the morning when after you brush your teeth, to one side, remove the excess mucus, and then the other side, just do one side very in bastrika, and, and remove your own mucus, and then it'll unblock all this area and prevent headaches. People get a lot of headaches, sometimes all the sinuses are blocked. So I find it a very useful practice right after you brush your teeth just to do that. One side and do the other side. And you clear out your nostrils, and then you take a deep breath. I feel so good. Mm -hmm. Just keep remembering to take deep breaths. Be still and know that I am. Okay, yes. I've heard that that you breathe in the morning, you breathe in through one of the nostrils, and in the evening it's the other one. Yes. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Yes, it changes. Mm. And they say you breathe from one nostril to the other, it's like one hour, one and a half hours. Okay, it switches. Yes, it switches. Yes, what were you going to say? No, it's connected with the nadis. nadis. Yes, okay. it is. Yeah. Eden Pingala. Yeah. Yeah. Pingala. You got the Shimshumna, yeah. and then you got the na three main nadis is the Shishumna, which is the main cortex, you know, and it is uh, straight up. And then you got the Eden and Pingala that go up like this. And Ida going through the left. That's yes. right. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Ida connected with Moon, Yin, and uh, Pingala connected with Right and Yang. Right. So more energy and more quiet. So meditation, more quiet, and and you will notice that when you eat also for digestion, after digestion, notice yourself. Just put your finger under, underneath your nostril. And you can see which nostril you're breathing from at the moment. So you never use them both at the same yeah. time? Right. Never. Never. You can. Never. You can learn to do that. <laughs> it switches. Interesting. It's interesting. So who does all that? Who moves your body? Who calls? Isn't it quite amazing? When you see all those things, you know, when I studied anatomy, and I go, it's too incredible. Yeah. There has to be a makeup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Call it Ishwara. Call it, there has to be a creator to create this body. If humans can create computers, and you need a human to create a computer, a computer will not build by itself. Who created us? There has to be a creator. Has to. It doesn't make any otherwise. How can it be so perfect? So perfectly designed. So this is why truth is one part so many. If you follow certain disciplines, eat good food, eat healthy food, don't overeat, exercise the body, breathe well, think good thoughts. That's the petrol and oil for our body. Then you live a longer life. Simple. You see, it's really very simple. It's all scientific. It's so scientific. It's nothing like it's, oh my God, you're getting all these rules and regulations. No, it's just putting good petrol into your body. That's all it's saying. And keep it simple. If you want a longer life, that's what you do. Happy life, this is what you do. Scientific, it's a textbook. <laughs> but everything, when you learn to focus on one thing, you will see God in everything. 
So look, where is your instrument? What have you been given? This body that is yours. I'm just going to sorry. So we're going to finish now. Anybody have anything to say before we finish? It's time anyway. 7.40. Anything you'd like to share? Anybody have a story to tell? Carmen, you're smiling. Okay. Yeah. Is Hannah? You have something to tell yeah. us. No, I don't have any special <laughs> story to I think that every day is a special story. Whenever I come here, this is a different story. No, no, I'm laughing because I didn't believe you. I mean, of course I believe, but when you said, no, uh, you don't believe, but for, by one, I said, no, this is not possible. <laughs> so I tried, no, no, it, it's Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I was laughing because of the you know? yeah. It's incredible it's how incredible, simple yeah. it is. Yeah. Huh? It's really quite in Who does it? Yeah, Who yeah. tells you what to do and which nostril to read? It's quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's why when you're quiet and you have time when you study the spiritual sciences, it's so interesting. Like for me, it's so interesting to study my body and my mind. Oh, why would you want to bother other people and trouble other people with your mind and want other things? Because there is so much to learn. Yes. Right? You see? So and there's, there's so much to learn. There's so much to grow from this body, so much to learn. So you don't want to trouble your mind with nonsense. You don't want to put nonsense in there. You want to put peaceful thoughts in there. Right? Because when you get excited, oh, this is heaven. This is, this is how I got really excited about spirituality. Right? God. If the Creator said, I want to know the Creator, I want to know God, I want to know God, I want to see God, you know, then you get excited, I want to see it. Why not? Why not me? And that keeps you going. And that goal keeps you away from all the nonsense. And that all that's going on, you say, oh, that's all there to teach me to see that. That's all there to teach me to see that. That's more exciting, more interesting, it becomes your drug of all drugs. And that's what happens. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. No, I just wanted to thank you, Melanie, for being such an inspi inspiration to us all. No, I, it's really on a daily basis. And I feel the joy that I feel every time I talk to other people about you and just spreading whatever I, I learned from you, that you learned from him, that he learned from whoever. It's just amazing to see the ripples. Isn't it going just out nice? and to different countries and now with the videos and they just spread yeah. and spread and thank spread. You. Now thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So my joy. It really is my joy. And that's why you're such a wonderful teacher. Because that is what's coming out as well. The joy of it all instead of it being a struggle. That's when the teaching was a struggle. Life is too short. <laughs> 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 I will waste my time. <laughs> So without a guru like you, you know, somebody has to set an example, not only make the words, you know, mean something, but you have to, nice. I think in life we all need an example to follow. Oh. Yeah. And when you see somebody like you, that you really walk your talk, you know, it, it makes me feel personally so humble and thinking that if I can reach a little bit, little bit more, you know, what you're teaching, then I will be very, very happy and grateful. You're doing lots for your own people, aren't you? And it will expand more now. When you ask, um, when you open your channels, people will come to you. When you practice the yamas and niyamas, you don't have to ask, God will send when you're ready. It is amazing. Yeah, it is it amazing. Is amazing. And you feel so differently, you know. Yeah. I feel so differently now when I got this lady at 96. I feel that I'm so privileged she's been sent to my life. I'm able to find her to die. Yes. And I'm able to give her such a peace because I feel I'm at peace with the death. It's incredible. Well, that was your gift, right? That yes. was your learning, and that was your saddest moment of your life. Yes. When you lost and you started such a joy. And you're using that now yes. to help others. Do it for your daughter. I do. 